Quilts with a Saturdays with Cedar Quilt episode for you today. We are going to be loading a quilt all three layers and giving you a few options. So a new follower of mine, Amy, was asking about loading all three layers. She's been watching lots of videos and really enjoyed what she's seen of ours so far. And so hello Amy and thank you very much for this suggestion on this episode. So I asked her to send me a few pictures of her frame. She has been using a, a much smaller um, setup and has just recently gotten something a little bit bigger. And so she wanted to know how to load the batting and the, the top of the quilt particularly. Um, and so I wanted to see what she had because, you know, there are lots of options. Every system is a little bit different, every brand, um, boy, I've had lots of different ones here over the years, and we'll show you a picture or two of some of the smaller frames we've had in here. But basically, the idea is the same. Sometimes you load from the front, sometimes you load from the back. My first quilting machine I had in here um, sat the opposite direction and I always quilted from the back because that setup was more for panto, paper pantographs, and it was very difficult to do free motion. Although, <laughs> you know me, I'm a bit of a puzzler and I'm a free motion kind of artsy fartsy gal. So even though I was running it from the back of the machine, um, I did, a, I did a couple of paper pantos, but after that I was, I was watching and running it this way, but the, the only speed control was in the back of the machine. But anyway, basically you're going to be loading your back fabric first, and we already have a, a good free video on YouTube about that, but we'll quickly go over that, and especially a couple of the options, but we won't spend a lot of time on that. And then we'll mainly be talking about how to load the batting and the, and the top. So, on your frame setup, whether it's little or big, you're going to have one or maybe two back bars. Amy's setup does not appear to have any kind of a lower back bar. It just has one back bar. And so that is where everything is going to get loaded together and wound up and as you as you work your quilt and you get further and further through it it's going to get wound up on that back bar most every setup i have seen has two rollers in the front and generally speaking we are going to have two sets of fabric coming through here when we first 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 start and what i like to do is think of it has two layers of a sandwich here. And you're gonna have one on here and one on there and they both feed through the center and then they go to that back bar. Everything's gonna be wound up on these two and the tail is gonna be hanging down the center this way. This part is going to get attached and it's going to be hanging down on the back side. Now I don't have a, a leader gripper on this one, but again, you're going to have it wound up on here and it's going to be hanging down. I float my quilts, so I do not put my tops wound up on here. I don't do that, but we'll, we'll explain the concept of that, um, but your top would go on the inside one usually. You want your back fabric to extend as far as possible from the very front to the very back and that has to carry everything. That's the foundation. The quilt top lays on top of that. So this is the most important one to put down this is the one that really has to be flat and smooth and straight like we talk about in the other video, the free video. Um, but this is the one you're going to load first. The other thing you have to consider 
are the gears. And we're gonna show you right over here. The other thing to consider when you're loading your quilt is how the gears work. Hopefully you have locking gears and they will go one direction but they will not go the other way. And you can lift these little locks out of the way so that you can, you can move and wind the, the quilt up. But when you lock them into place, you can tighten it. You can snug it up a little bit and it won't pull back the other direction. This is really important. Depending on the system, the frame system that you have, some of them are kind of homemade and put together and you have some options how you put it together and not everybody puts them together the way that they're suggested to be put together. So the direction that the locking gear works is more important than having everything waterfall through the center the way it's supposed to be because if your gears lock the other direction, then you have to wind it differently. I have sometimes mentioned in our videos, when I'm puzzling things out, I sometimes start at the beginning, like most of the rest of the people in the world, but oftentimes I puzzle from the back, from the, from the end point. Where do I want to have things end up? How do I make it work that way? With with one of the frames that I had, a very small grace frame, I think the gears were maybe not put in here quite the right way. And so I had one set up, I think we have a photo of it even, where we had to go a little bit other way around. Um, and that's okay. There's more than one way to do this. You just need to be able to snug things up so that it doesn't keep sagging. And even on some of those wooden frames, oh my, <laughs> you can sometimes use bungee cords and things to help hold things more securely. Or you can add a little uh, wing nut and screw and whatnots. But anyway, the gears are really helpful and very important and they should be such that they don't go into the waterfall, they go out instead. This is how you tighten them and then get snug this way. That's how most of them should work. Um, and we're going to assume that as a given for the rest of the discussion. The next thing before we actually start loading everything is we need to consider the pieces of the quilt that we have. You should have a back and as we've discussed in our, our previous episode of Saturdays with Cedar Quilts, you do need to have the back plenty big, bigger than what the top of the quilt is. I usually like to fold the quilts in half in both directions so they're now down to a fourth of what they really are. Fold them in half both directions and, and then that way it's easier to compare how things sit. I have a nice clean floor here. I wash it frequently and I use the floor quite often to see how things are. We want things to be nice and square and flat if at all possible. So one of the things I look at is if I have everything lined up along the square lines, is everything else square? Yes, that's very nice and square. And I want to see if it is bigger than the quilt top. And yes, it is. And I have at least two inches, and it's folded in half. So I'm gonna have at least four inches there. And I have lots of extra in the opposite direction. Um, okay, so it is big enough, yay. I don't think it's big enough to go the other direction. Ooh, just barely. But again, we'd have a lot going this way, but not going that way. Hmm. All right, this means we have options. We could load this either direction because it is big enough to put this top on the back in either direction. Okay. If I was using pins instead of leader grips, I would probably go this way. 
But because I use leader grips, I am probably going to go the other direction. Let me explain. The most important decision in which way you're going to load something is the back fabric. If there are no seams whatsoever, you can load it either direction. But whenever possible, if there is a seam, and let's pretend there's only one, which there is in this. If you have a seam in the middle of your back, you want that loaded parallel to your bars. We want that seam to be laying right on the bar. Because as you wind it up, this little seam gets wound up and it's no big deal. Not a big deal at all. If, however, we have it going the other direction, If you have a single seam in your back fabric and you load it perpendicular to your bars, as this winds up, you are going to have many, 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 many layers of fabric right here and only two or three or four over here, but you're going to have 20 here. This is going to get very thick and everything's going to be lopsided. It's going to be like a bird's body and really thin wings and it's not going to roll up smoothly. That's going to give you problems. So if at all possible, if you have a single seam in your back fabric, you want it to go right along this belly bar. That's the most important thing. Next most important thing about loading a back is you want it to be You want the inside of the quilt to stay in the inside of the quilt. This is the seam. We don't want that sticking out on the outside when it's all done. So you want this facing up because the quilt top is going to be facing down and you want all the batting and all the seams in the middle. So that's the next most important thing. Oh my goodness, you have no idea how many times I would load a back, get it all nice and pretty and rolled up and realize oh, I have it the wrong way in the beginning. Um, thankfully, I learned my lesson and now I rarely do that. <laughs> but don't be surprised if you do that once in a while because it does happen. So the back fabric is going to be on this very front belly bar, the seam and all the, the innards are gonna be facing up and we're gonna load it to the other bar. Before I used leader grips, I used to always pin my tops and backs to the leaders. With pins, I, I prefer to have a flatter or smaller head on the pin and as sturdy and long a pin as possible. The T-pins work pretty well, but they are really big fat pins usually, and I don't like to have something quite that... Um, rough on somebody else's fabric, but the T-pins worked really quite nicely. But most of the time I used the, the yellow round headed uh, pins and they worked pretty well. They were easy to, to grasp and they were really nice. So let me see if I have a couple of those. This, this is the type I used most of the time. Some of them have really, really big heads and they, they would sometimes pull a little bit, but this is what I would use most of the time. However, I soon decided that the flathead pins were so much nicer. They are so thin and flat. They just don't take up any extra space. They don't create any extra wrinkles and crinkles. And so I quickly decided that these were by far my favorite for pinning quilts on the leaders. They're much, much nicer. There are several different brands of these flathead pins and there are different widths or diameters. Some of these, the, the double um, 
the two-tone blue ones that I have are very, very fine and they are super sharp. They don't leave marks in fabric because they're so skinny, but they bend really easily. I do prefer the thicker, stronger flathead pins for pinning quilts on the leaders. So anyway, there are different brands, assorted sizes, lots of options. <laughs> so make sure you get the stronger, thicker ones. But yes, the flathead pins are really nice. And if you accidentally run over them with your sewing machine, you're not as likely to injure your sewing machine as if you have the, the T-pins or those, those big fat round um, headed pins. Those do a little more damage. But yeah, you can usually um, you know stitch through that plastic pretty well. <laughs> Don't do that. So if I was pinning this, what I would do is I would extend my leader down as far as possible and I would leave just a little bit of the cloth up on top, either bringing it forward or on mine. It worked really well to, to drop it as far as I could the other way and bring this up and over because then I could, I could let the back fabric rest on there and it doesn't slide. It, it sticks. If you have a, a metal bar and you put the fabric there, it's going to slide off. But if you have the fabric up there, it'll hold. And of course, I use magnets quite often now too. But if you don't have magnets and you're pinning regular traditional, that's what I would do is I would drape it over this first belly bar and I would catch the end over there. And then, because we want this all hanging down, I haven't done it this way for a long time, so let me think here a little bit. Yes, this is the way I would go. So I would bring the fabric up even with the back leader, and I would extend it down about that far. So let me get this. And when I pinned, I would attach this rail first. Now that I do leader groups, I usually start at the back instead. But let's pretend. Get this out of here. Good, because I think I was getting your butt. Were you getting my butt? And we just needed to, there was no reason for it. <laughs> no reason to see my butt? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Taking my leader grips out. Okay. Start at the very beginning. So on my leader, I have added markings. I want to see where the center is, even though I don't always center my quilts. And then I want to see where the 10 inch marks are. And I would pin about a quarter inch off the edge of the leader. And I would make this part of the fabric pretty straight and even with the leader and I would make my adjustments on the back side on the second end. But this is where I would make things nice and even. Now that I do leader grips, it's just the opposite. I start in the back and I do this last and I make all my adjustments up here. But when I'm pinning, this, this just worked better for me. This was the better puzzle. But I start in the center and I 
come out 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way out, and then I go back to center and I do 10, 20, 30, 40 the other direction. After I have the tens done, then I go back to the fives, and then I finally do the twos and sevens. Well, two and a half and seven and a half, but who's counting? But that way there are enough pins to hold things nice and even and stable without too many gaposis. Now, I like having the, the salvage left on the back fabric on the ends where you're going to be pinning it to the leader. A salvage doesn't stretch. It sometimes shrinks in a little bit if you've washed the fabric, but it's not going to stretch. And that's really important. If you're putting the back on and you're stretching the back, that makes things wonky then later. So, anyway, if you could get a close up here. So this is what I would do. I would start in the center, do the 10, 20, 30, 40 all the way out, and then whatever is left on the end, I would get that last little bit too so it's not flapping. Then I would go back and do my fives all the way, and then I would come back and do my, my twos and sevens. So it would be pretty even and, and nice that way. We're not gonna pin everything. And by the way, um, when I'm done, when I take the quilts off again, I would leave my pins in there. I would just leave them there all the time. Of course, then I'd poke myself once in a while too. But then I didn't have to start from scratch all the time and they were all there. But, um, so that's another little helpful hint there for you. But let's pretend that that is completely pinned nice and even and we're gonna finish putting this on. Because not everybody uses leader grips. But oh my goodness, if you ever try leader grips, you're going to love them. You're going to want them. And I do still occasionally pin if the back isn't quite big enough or it's too thick or something for the leader grips. But I really like the leader grips. But pinning works nicely and that's what most of us start out with. So as I wind, I would keep things as smooth as possible and I do not have a seam stretching that way. So when we do get to the seam, I'm going to try to make sure that once again everything is really straight. I'm going to try to even things up again and then keep winding. Okay, now I'm getting close to the end there. So I'm going to quit at this point, but I have things wound up pretty nicely, pretty even here, and now I'm going to go to the back and we're going to make some adjustments. So then I would come around to the back side and now I would try to make everything as smooth and even over here as possible. I'm going to try to keep my leader fairly taut and smooth and I want to get the fabric just as smooth and nice and straight and happy as possible. I probably centered the first one on the center, back when I tried to center the backs. But I do not try to match up the second side with the, the center because it's more important that the fabric is happy and smooth rather than making sure that the rule is followed that, oh, the center of this needs to be in the center of this and that's where they line up. Because if it's sitting in there all kind of cockeyed and, and kitty wampus and wonky, you're going to have an icky looking backside to your quilt. So at this point, I don't care where the center on anything is back here. I just want this to be nice and smooth so that I have a pretty backside. So once I know that that is pretty smooth here. We're going to wind up the front and I would go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth a few times but I'm just going to go this way and now I would do the same thing with the pins. I would pin at about a quarter inch and I still have my leader grip in here so it's really difficult. This is why I don't go back and forth very often anymore as I do one or the other but I would do the center and then I would do 10, 20, 30, 40 out and then I would do 10, 20, 30, 40 out this way 
And then I go back for my fives and then the twos and sevens. And then when I was all done and I dropped it down, it would be ready to wind up. And I had it in the right position. I came about that by doing the maze backwards, by doing the puzzle backwards. Because I was having a really hard time trying to figure out how to pin with everything back here and then not having it all wonky out there. So for me, I, I puzzled through and got it pinned the way I wanted it. And then I came back here and I, I puzzled it out several ways before I finally came up with this idea. If that leader comes up and over and I can drap, drape that fabric here and then I can pin, and I would have my pins from this side, then when I dropped it, it all was happy in front there. So anyway, I hope that made sense about pinning. Now we're gonna quickly go to leader grips instead. And it's pretty similar, but now I pull it out this way and I load from the back first. Um, and I think pretty much everything else is on that other video. We'll, we'll put a link and you can watch my how to load a long arm quilt back on YouTube for the rest of that. And we're going to get to the, the um, what do you call the middle fluff of the cookie? The, the batting, <laughs> the batting at the top of the quilt. Pinning takes quite a long time, but the leader grips are really quick. You just snap them into place. I usually like one of the little clips to hold the other end so that I can keep it fairly straight. I make sure that the split of the inner rod is not exactly where the split of the C-shape clamp is. Um, there are three rods in here and they're blue plastic and I do not have mine connected together because if I don't need all three, I usually take one of them out. But you can see this, this takes no time at all to snap this all together. Whereas if I was pinning my 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then go back for my fives and my twos and my sevens, that would have taken a long time. Oh my goodness, this is so fast. I love it. So when I'm doing leader grips, I load from this side first and I make all my adjustments to make it flat and happy and smooth from that side. Once you have both ends of your back pinned and secure, if you have a few little incidental wrinkles, you can roll to the front and roll to the back and, and get this to be pretty smooth and happy. But basically you want you want this to be really nice and smooth. You don't want saggy spots. If it's saggy from the very beginning, yeah, you're going to have trouble. So try to make that as smooth, as happy as possible there. Alrighty. Next, I'm going to try to quickly explain to you how to roll up a quilt top on your belly bar. Well, I just lay this on top and I'm going to try to center the top of the quilt on the center of the back the best I can. It doesn't have to be precisely, but you want to check to see how things are rolled up here. Oftentimes when you roll up the back, you're going to have a little telescoping of the fabric. Someone just asked about the telescoping of my leaders this week too, but that's a different thing. When the back rolls up, if you have seams that make it go all wonky, things aren't going to stay real even here. So you want to make sure that you have at least, oh, at least two inches, if not four or five or ten inches off to the side, depending on if you use a ruler base or not, or if you use a computer or not. You want to be able to have your grips, your side clamps out here and you want to be able to stitch all the way out to the edge of your quilt without bumping into things. So if I'm not using my ruler base and I'm just doing free motion, I can come out to the edge here and I'm not gonna hit 
this clamp. The, the neck of the sewing machine or the quilting machine is not going to be hitting into the clamps and I will be good with just a couple of inches. So we used to say, as long as the quilt back was oh, about two inches in all directions around, if you're pinning and you're doing free motion, two inches is enough in all directions. So four, four to six inches is enough. But if anything's a little bit wonky, how it rolls up, you might, you might lose an inch just in the winding up of things and keeping it straight instead of being wonky. So yeah, if you could have at least 10 or 15 inches extra side to side and front to back, that just makes things a whole lot easier now because so many quilters have a computer and you don't want the computer to be running into anything. And a lot of us use ruler bases now. So anyway, make the backside big enough. But back to the quilt top. You want it basically pretty centered on here. And I don't like having batting on here to begin with because I want as little extra resistance as possible in winding up this quilt top. So once I have it pretty well even and I see that, yep, I have enough room, I could turn it the other way. So if I needed to be using the computer or if I needed to be using my ruler base, I would turn the quilt this way now and look at it again. I already checked before we got started and I know that the back fabric is plenty long in either direction. Um, I'd have to be really careful if I was going this way, but I'd have plenty of side space. So depending on which way you want to do things, this would work. I like to put most of my quilts on with the widest, the longest side going this way because then I don't need to go as many passes to finish it up. If I have it tall and skinny this way, I have to have many, 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 many turns of the quilt to get it finished. If I have it wide and narrow this way, I only have to do a few passes this way to finish. So for me, that works. But if you are doing something very directional and you can't flip things around in your head and be sideways, or your computer program isn't going to line up as nicely if it's sideways, then you need to keep that in consideration. But I'm probably going to go this direction and I have just enough two inches on either side to do free motion. Okay, now you have to imagine a little bit because I don't even have a leader on this bar. In fact, I oftentimes just take this bar off and leave it off completely. But, again, we're gonna puzzle kind of backwards. When it's all done, the outside of the cookie, the outside of the cookie, and the stuffing in the middle, you want to be able to see this pretty part of the quilt top. So that has to be up and the back is going to be towards the middle. And then we would be pinning this just like we pinned the back basically on here. But we're just going to quickly do this with some magnets. Now, if I am winding this up, I can tighten it this way and it's not going to go back that way. So I would want this to come here. And remember how I was saying when you first put things on those leader grips that are the leaders that are attached to your bars should should roll out and they both should fall down in the center. So I would bring that up and I would pin on here, but we're just going to use some magnets. And I would not do this on a real quilt if I was going to be actually stitching this one. This would be too lumpy and bumpy, but for display purposes, we're going to pretend that this is pinned on very nicely and smoothly and we'd be fine. I could probably actually use four of these and it would be pretty even actually. Let's do that. Let's get one more.
Okay, so once that is pinned on, we are going to carefully roll it up and we are going to really be watching our seams and trying to make sure that we keep things very, very square and straight. I'm going to put that all the way over the top so I can see the straightness and the happiness of the quilt as I'm winding it up here. And I just want to keep loving it into place, not stretching it, but encouraging it to go where I want it to go. I don't want either side kind of telescoping. Okay, I want you to come over here. If, if we have lots of piecing and then no piecing, and then lots of piecing and no piecing, and then lots of piecing and a, a border, a smooth border, and then lots of piecing and a border, there's no extra taking up extra space here. So this is going to get a little bit floppy. Whereas here where there's lots of seams, there's extra stuff here. So as you wind this up, this is going to be full and a little bit tight, but those outside borders, you have to keep them straight. Some people try, and in the beginning, I tried keeping everything smooth and tight all the time, but that makes everything kind of wonky. You want to keep those borders just in line with everything else. It, it doesn't quite wind up as tightly, but you just want everything to be as straight and happy as possible. So again, if you have a stack of coins top where you have lots of piecing, lots of seams in the back, and then a very smooth piece of fabric for the, the border in between and, or the sashing in between with nothing, you're going to have some thick and thin and thick and thin bulky and lack of bulk areas. So as you wind it up, you're just checking to make sure everything stays as square and happy as possible. And don't get too excited about those border or sashes. If you have a lot of window painting everywhere, you're going to have some thick and thin and thick and thin, and you just want to try to keep everything as, as happy and straight and square as possible. And this, I think, is really tedious, and it's very difficult, and it's hard to keep it all perfect. In a perfect world, you should be able to wind this stuff all up, and it should stay happy. And as you progress, it should stay happy. But I used to always pull this way too tight as I was quilting, and then my, my quilts would curl when I'd be all done. But if you were pinning everything to all the bars like they teach you to, this is what you would do. Once this is ready, I would release this bar. I would release the tension on the back. I would drop it down kind of saggy, and I would fold this loosely to the top of this rail and balance it all on there. Boy, I haven't done this for a long time. This was a lot more work. Okay, so we're just going to fold that gently and carefully up on top and try to keep it out of the way as we put the batting in there. If I had the batting in right away, it would have been really hard to wind this up. Now that I float, I do my batting and then my top. But if you are pinning everything to a leader here and you're winding this up, the batting is in the way. So get it all rolled up first, then add your batting. Now I didn't measure everything for the batting before we put it on here because I'm not gonna leave it on there. So we'll, we'll do that in a minute here too. But we're gonna pretend that this is the perfect size batting. Again, I'm going to lay it up over the top and I'm going to position it first before I get too excited about it. Now again, if your batting is wider than the back of your fabric, this little extra wing is going to be a bit of a problem later on. So I do like to pin this to the leader if I can. If this is hanging out after a while, just before I start to wind it, I, I will try to attach it there if I can. Or 
I will cut it off as I go, just so it's out of the way. If it's the perfect size before you start, that's even easier. But sometimes if I don't have quite as much width of my back fabric as I really, really want to, I only have two inches here. One of the things I can do is I can baste as I go, not only basting the side of the quilt, but I will sometimes baste the side of the back to the batting and then I will clamp my batting to the side straps. Oh, that's a little secret. Um, so if, you're, if your back is big enough but it's not quite as big as you really want it to be, make sure you baste it to the batting as you're going in the, thro the throat space and then pin your side clamps to the batting and then that way you don't bump into them with your ruler base or your computer and whatnot. So yeah, that helps. Okay, back to what we're doing here. Once I get the batting kind of lined up in the place where I want it to be, now I thread it through here carefully. And with my belly on the belly bar, I hold it in place because some backs are really slippery. If you're using a minky or a cuddle or fireside or one of those really fuzzy, fuzzy, super soft backings, your batting will just keep falling off over here if you're not holding it in place. But once I get it kind of close, I'm going to just kind of tickle it and, and encourage it to get just pretty close to that back bar. I want it fairly straight and lined up with that back bar and just kind of encourage it to go where I want it to be. And I don't worry about these little burps and bubbles in the middle here too much. I just want that edge to be happy up there. And then I'm going to pin it. And I like using odd numbers because I want to put one in the center and I want to have one on the end and I want to have probably one in the middle depending on how big or little this is. But I usually use five Sometimes I will use seven, but I don't need to hold it really tight unless it's a slippery backside. If you've got a slippery backside, then you want to, then you want to pin it a little bit more. Now, if you're comfortable with things and you're, you've done it a few times, you don't need very many pins and you can use your machine to baste that edge of the batting. That really is nice and helpful. So where do I want to pin my pins? If I place my pins really close to the top where I want to be stitching, I have to keep pulling the, the pins out. Okay, so on the batting, if I pin really close to the batting and I'm gonna come along with that sewing machine right away, I'm gonna to have to pull them out as I go, which is nice because then you don't leave them in there. So if I know that I'm going to be basting with the machine, I'm going to bring it down probably two inches instead so that they're out of the way and I don't have to stop and move them out of the way as I come along and I baste my edge down with the machine. Now if you're completely free motion and no computer, you just make sure you've got enough room here. You tighten this up. We're still not worried about the top of the quilt yet. We're still not worried about these bubbles. We just want to get that batting basted into place. Okay. Now, we do have to stop and think and remember, do I have plenty of extra this way on the back or do I have plenty of extra that way on the back? I am really close this way, so yes, I have plenty of extra back here. I don't have to worry about getting the edge of the quilt just as close to the edge of the back fabric. If you're just barely, 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 barely big enough in all directions, you'd want this batting as close to that edge as you're going to be able to stitch and you'd want the top of the quilt also just as close as you can stitch and hope that you don't run out of back fabric before you get to the other end. Again, this is why you need your back plenty big. I like to stay at least at least three inches away so that I can get 
that back up and behind my bar and I can stitch pretty close to the bar but yeah three four inches yeah if I can have a little bit more than that for leeway in there a little more wiggle room that would be nice but I need at least three if not four inches there to get that all the pins and everything out of the way so I'm not stitching into them but once that batting is basted in place now you can bring your quilt top up make sure you remove all your pins and what I do is I use those same pins now to pin my quilt top in place and again if you used a plumb line from the computer to have a super straight line then you're going to place your quilt top exactly on the line that the computer stitched and again this this is where people have so much trouble. It's so easy to stretch that border. You just want it to be happy. You want it to lay nice and flat without puckers, but without being stretched. If you have precise measurements and you know the top is really square, you certainly can do all sorts of things to keep, keep your measurements right where you want them where you need them but I usually just use painters tape on my belly bar rather than worrying about the the actual measurements because I'd rather see that it is very happy I'm a visual hands-on person I'm gonna love it into place and eyeball it and if it looks a little wonky I'm gonna fix it and just kind of tickle it into place a little bit Okay, so now that I have my pins in there and I have enough room to come through with a quilter, now I'm going to baste. And I'm gonna use, oh, as, as long a stitch as I possibly can. Four, inch, four stitches per inch is usually what I do. And I don't care what color the thread is right now because this is not this is not going to show. I'm going to stay just as close to that edge as I possibly can. And you can see I'm bumping into the bar. So I need to bring this away just a little bit more. And I'm going to bring this just a tad tighter. I'm not making this super tight. I'm just keeping it barely tight. Because I just want to get it on here all nice and happy. I pull up my thread from the bobbin and I'm just going to tack it a little bit out here on this outer corner and I'm going to wiggle. I'm just going to wiggle a, a sort of like a little zigzag but nice and big and I want to stay as close to the edge as I possibly can. Try to keep as many threads out of the way as you can and I'm just going to wiggle that. If you use a computer channel lock and you're doing a perfectly straight line, you're going to keep adjusting this ahead of the needle and keeping it just as perfectly straight as possible. I use double batting quite often. And if I use a really straight line with double batting, that wants to pop. It just wants to lift back there. And that's harder to do the batting. So I like doing a wiggle ditch that's almost like a zigzag because then it keeps that outer quarter inch nice and flat. And it's really easy to put the binding on then because you have that edge all, all secure and stable with that little wiggly zigzag. And this has a long enough stitch that if, if some of it shows when I put the binding on, I can easily unstitch it and pull it out of there and no one will see it. But I like that little edge there so that it keeps everything nice and happy and smooth and it's easy to put on the binding. And when I get to the edge, I come out and over and back up and I just come down a little ways. Now we are going to make everything happy out here. So now that that back edge is basted and it's stitched in there and it's happy, now I'm going to lock that bar in place and I'm going to bring it up a little closer to the bar 
There we go. And now we're going to try to make everything as happy as possible. So I lift this bar as far back as I possibly can, get it out of the way, and I'm going to burp and fluff my batting, and I'm going to get my back fabric nice and smooth and happy. If possible, I'm going to try to remove any threads that I see. I'm going to make sure that I don't have any wrinkles and crinkles and creases back here. I always press my backs. I don't have to have them perfectly smooth, but I want most of the wrinkles out of there. And then I want to make sure that my batting, again, is really nice and smooth. This is the end of the bolt, so it's a little crinkly. I actually iron my batting sometimes too, but we're not going to on this one. And then love it into place. Remove any extra threads. And now we're going to bring this bar back into place. Okay, now, when I, when I used to have these pinned and rolled, this is the tricky part. To wind this just tight enough that it is tight and smooth, but not too tight. That's a little bit saggy. This is a little tight. So I can, I can roll the fabric off the roll a little bit. I can do a little patty cake. I can get it kind of nice and happy in here. And if something's a little saggy, just kind of love it into place. But I know that my, my rows were pretty straight on the roll here. So I just need to make it happy. But if this is too tight and things are stretched, your quilt's not going to be happy. So once you get it in place, you might even want to back off just one click, just one click on the gear. And again, let just a wee bit more of the fabric out so that it's not too tight. Um, I think that was one of my biggest mistakes when I was a beginner. I pulled my tops and the backside for that matter. I pulled everything too tight trying to get all the wrinkles out and making everything smooth and square with the rollers. Um, yeah. So at this point, I hope that makes sense. We wanna make sure that we look one more time before we actually start stitching. Do we have the, the outside of the fabric showing, the outside of the cookie on the outside of the cookie, and the top of the quilt showing top, and double check triple check because once in a while you get all done yep the letters are going in the right direction on the back side so this is the middle of the stuffing and that's the outside of the cookie yep we've got everything right so now i'm going to baste the edge of the quilt and i'm going to baste this outer edge of the back fabric and I can see it and I can feel it and I'm just going to base that into place. I've got a little wrinkle crinkle here. And now I can use my side clamps way out here. It's not going to distort anything up here. It, it's going to stretch the batting a little bit but I don't care about that. Um, but that way I have enough space where I can use my ruler base if I want to. So, baste it here and here. Okay, now I'm not going to use this other belly bar, so I'm just going to unwind everything. Because I like to float my tops. I like them to just waterfall off the edge. And I'm not going to leave that wound up. 
Be very careful when you're using these big magnets. Do not get two of them stuck together. They are really strong, and if you get your finger in between there, you will pinch your finger really bad. So I keep mine in individual little spaces in my cubbies in the corners so they don't get involved with each other there. And now because we've already burped and fluffed it, it's out of the way. I can leave this in place and use the, the painter's tape to help me keep things in line. And I just kind of eyeball it and give myself a little bit of wiggle room and grace. As long as I'm pretty close to that, I'm good. Oftentimes if I have a center seam that I'm going to be able to keep an eye on, I will place that there as well. But yeah, I put a couple little pieces of painter's tape on there so I can keep my edges nice and even and square, but happy. Happier is oftentimes more important for me than keeping everything square and then squished into place where it's not happy. But most of the time I just take this bar off. Options. If you leave this bar in place, there's some place to rest your elbows. And then when you're doing free motion, it just makes it a little easier to balance your, your rulers. It's a little easier to have a little more control. This belly bar is a little further away, and so it, you, you just lose a couple of inches of, of reach if you don't have this one in place. So most of the time I have left this in place, but recently I've started taking this off completely. I put it on each time to help me load the quilt, but once the quilt is loaded, I take this off. I put it down underneath and keep it out of the way. And it's a good time to do a little bit of exercise, and you can you can do a couple of you know, a couple of bench press lifts or things, but or squats with it. Anyway, I usually keep mine down underneath, and it's out of the way. So there you go. And then we just enjoy our happy quilting from there. And I hope that this was really helpful for you. Hope it wasn't too confusing by talking about both the pinning and the leader grips. But you know, they both work. Whatever works best for you is good. And uh, now I get to figure out what all I'm going to put on this quilt. So thanks for coming over for this Saturday with Cedar Quilts. And uh, come back and check me out again. We'll see you soon. Toodaloo. And before you start, make sure you take out all the pins. Double check, triple check. Don't leave any pins in the way. Oh, by the way, if you need to mark something and remember, if I want to remember not to stitch in these two little squares, if I put a pin somewhere, I make sure that it is parallel to the belly bars. Because if you wind things up, you don't want the pins this way to poke. You want them this way where they'll just stay in place. All right, now we'll see you later. Do one extra bonus thing. With the quilt just being floated and waterfall, you can see how much more quilt you have left. If it's a huge quilt and it's on the floor, I would try to make sure that the quilt stays in on the batting so that the quilt is not on the floor. But it's really nice sometimes to see how many more sections do I have? And I do a lot of random things, and so I'm trying to decide, okay, how many more do I have? But especially if you wind it up on that belly bar, and I almost always do it anyway, take a couple of pictures of the quilt out open, hanging on a wall or on your bed or on the floor, but take a picture of it before you load it. You're going to thank me about that one. <laughs> Measure it and take a photo. <laughs> okay, now we're saying goodbye. Toodle. It's a Minnesota goodbye. <laughs> Toodle.